This is the second of the three videos that we will spend on discussing the transport layer. In the first video, we discussed what the transport layer does and we introduced the very important concept of reliability. We looked at it in particular in the TCP context. More specifically, we looked at the manner in which a connection is established in a reliable way and the manner in which a connection is terminated in a reliable way in TCP. In this video, we will look at reliability during communication. In other words, in that interval after this uh, connection has been established and before it is terminated. <laughs> The question we have to ask ourselves is why would a connection become unreliable? And there are a couple of reasons why that may happen. Um, one reason is that data may simply be lost. And on the internet, data is often lost. Uh, lightning strikes, it takes a couple of bits out of transmission, and the packet that you've just sent is lost. It's just gone. Uh, another problem that may occur is that we are sending something to a recipient who is not ready to receive it. So the recipient may be very busy, all the buffers may be full, traffic arrives, and the recipient just can't deal with it. And the third problem for the time being is one where the network becomes so busy that literally nothing can get through. It's the problem of congestion. Now, congestion will be the topic, uh, will be included in lecture three or in video three, uh, but the other two problems we will talk about in this video. A mechanism that is often used to ensure reliability, uh, not necessarily on layer four, the same mechanism is used on other layers that want to ensure reliability as well, uh, is the notion of an automatic repeat request. The basic idea is you are sending out packets of data, the packets are acknowledged, if they are acknowledged, then you know that's good. Uh, uh, they have arrived at their destination. If they are not acknowledged within some time window, then we will send them again. So uh, this is where the automatic repeat request comes in. It's, it's if we don't hear anything from the other party, then we assume the data has been lost and we send that again. So the automatic repeat request obviously is going to help us with our data loss problem, not with the other two problems that we mentioned, namely a receiver who's not ready or congestion. So in general, for an automatic request, repeat request uh, system, we have to number our packets of data. Um, and as we send out the packets, we will, for example, if we have a party A and a party B, we may say this is packet number one. And um, then a little bit later again, this is packet number two. And a little bit later, this is packet number three. And we all sending these from A to B. Uh, now, the differences between these automatic request, uh, repeat request protocols is that we may have a case where B uh, can simply say uh, to A, I got your packet number three. And that would mean that's good enough, I got one, two, and three. There are other examples where B may say, uh, I got your packet one, I got your packet three, which means packet two is still lost. Um, uh, is another split between the reactions of A. Uh, 
Um, if B were to say, I did not get your packet two. Sorry, that's missing. Oh, I got it, but the CRC is invalid. Um, uh, then uh, there are these two variations, the go back in version, where A, after receiving this problem with two, it would send two and then three and four again. In other words, it would send them a, again in the sequence in which they were originally uh, sent using the one where the, where the problem was reported. There's also the selective repeat version where if it says something has gone wrong with number two, it just sends out number two. Uh, hopefully number three has been received okay. Um, let's uh, look at a simple example of how this may work in a more general case. An easy way to keep track of the values that we would expect to be used in a protocol like this, uh, and this is a generic automatic repeat request protocol, is to use trace tables. So what you see there are two trace tables, one for the values at A and one for the values at B. And in this simple example, we are only keeping track of the number of the packets that have been sent and the number of the packets that have been received. So um, uh, for A, what is A sent and what is it received? And B, what it is sent and what it is re what has it received? So um, we're going to use a, a typical convention in this world that the values that we put in there is not really past tense, but which are all the future uh, tense. Uh, what is the next thing that I'm going to send to you? And what is the next thing that I expect from you? So if we're going to number the packets from one, then uh, A is, uh, is expecting to send out packet one, and it is respecting packet number one from B. Uh, similarly, B will next send packet 1 and uh, it expects uh, packet, or packet 1 from B. So if A now sends out a packet to B, it will say, this is my packet number 1. It looks it up. That's the next one it was going to send. And it simply says, uh, I'm acknowledging number one from you. In other words, uh, sounds as if it says, I got number one from you. But it, what it really says is, I uh, expect number two f or number one from you whenever you talk to me. Uh, the thing that A immediately does after that is it says, now that I've sent this, the next one that I expect to send is two. I still haven't received anything from A, so I'm still expecting number one from B. B, after receiving this message, will say, well, the first thing that I'm expecting to send is still number one, but I've received packet one, so the first thing that I'm expecting is packet two. Uh, um, Let's suppose that A sends another packet. Uh, obviously, this packet will be, again, looking it up in our table, will be packet number two. And the next thing that we are expecting is still number one from B. So I am expecting number one from you. The moment that A has sent out this packet, it will update uh, its table to say, now I'm expecting to send number three. Still haven't heard anything from A, so I'm uh, from B, so that is packet number one that I'm expecting. And B will update its trace table to say, I'm still expecting to send number one. I just received number two, so the next thing that I'm expecting is number three. Uh, now, suppose B at this point wants to say something. 
uh, it will send a message to A. Obviously, uh, it's B's number one packet that is sent. And it tells A that the next thing that I'm expecting from you is packet number three. Um, and when this gets to A, A says, oh, great joy, uh, I've received all my packets that I've sent have been received. Um, so uh, next one that I'm going to send is still three, because I haven't sent three yet. But I have now received number one, so the next thing that I'm expecting is number two. B says... Um, I've sent number one, the next thing that I will send is two. I've not received anything new from A, um, so next thing that I'm expecting is still number three. But suppose that A now sends a packet and it disappears. Uh, lightning strikes, whatever, it never gets to its destination. So uh, in this packet, it would say, this is my number three packet that I'm sending. And it would say, I am acknowledging number two from you. That's the next one that I expect. But since this packet never arrives, um, it uh, means that B will say, well... In fact, it won't change anything. It will just retain the old values as if nothing has happened. This packet is lost. Um, and uh, A, meanwhile, will be quite happy. Next thing that it's going to send out is number four. It still expects number two. Uh, and B now sends a message in which it says... Uh, this is my packet 2. And I am expecting number 3 from you. And I would say, when this message arrives, I would say, whoa, something's gone wrong. I've already sent you number 3. Why are you expecting number 3? and uh, something's wrong. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to retransmit packet 3. Uh, packet 3 was obviously lost. So retransmitting it, next thing that I'm going to send out is number 4. I just got your number 2, so the next thing that I'm expecting from you is your number 3. And then when this gets to B, uh, B will obviously say, well, I've sent out, uh, uh, well, there already, once it is sent out its packet 2, it would have been increased to 2, and hopefully this time the receipt is successful, and the next one that it expects is 4. In our example, a knew the packet was lost because one, when it got the acknowledgement from B that its final packet was not acknowledged. Uh, but that, that may have been a wrong inference. Uh, perhaps packet 3 was still on the wire, was still on its way to, to A. So let's think a bit more carefully about what can happen in an automatic repeat request. And there are in essence five events that may occur. And I'm going to, uh, to use little symbols, these are not standard in any sense, to, to denote the things that can happen. So one of the things that can happen is that I get a packet, that I get a packet from the higher layer that I'm going to transmit. That's event number one. Event number two, uh, maybe I get a packet via the wire from the other side. Um, 
Event number three, maybe I get a, a negative acknowledgement from the other side. In other words, uh, we, we got your packet number three, but something was wrong. The CRC simply didn't work. Um, and then uh, two special cases. Suppose I send out a packet and I never hear anything back. Because B has nothing to say, so it can't piggyback the acknowledgement. Somehow it should acknowledge, but maybe this packet was lost or whatever. So I may have a timer that expires. So let's call this a retransmit, and I'm going to use the Greek letter Rua for that, to, to say retransmit. Um, and uh, if, if I've sent out packet I and I've heard nothing back after a while, uh, this timer basically expires. Let's use an exclamation mark to say this is uh, a serious thing, that it expired, its uh, alarm has gone off, I should have heard back, and I've not heard anything back. And uh, in, in a very similar way, if I send out, or rather if I receive a packet, then hopefully I will be able to piggyback the acknowledgement on something that I have to say. So in this case, uh, we've had nothing to say. Uh, there was no reason for us to piggyback an acknowledgement on to a normal data message. And it's time to say something, else the other part is going to send us uh, the packet again. Let's call this an acknowledgement timer. And if for packet I that I've received, I've not said that I've received it yet, so alarm goes off and it yells that I have to acknowledge it, then I have to acknowledge it. So those are the five things that can happen, and let's look at each of them uh, in an abstract way. In order to consider how we're going to handle these events, Let's use a couple of variables. Uh, one variable, S, will denote the sequence number of a packet. Um, so packet number one, packet number two, and so on. Uh, and S prime will denote the sequence number from the other party, from my communication party. Uh, acknowledgement, A, will be the next one that I will want to acknowledge. And then the communication partner's acknowledgement number will be A prime. Uh, that's the one that the, the partner we are talking to is ready to acknowledge. Uh, um, let's look at this first case. The first case was where we get a message from the higher layer protocols and we are sending it out on the network. So the moment that I'm going to send this out, I'm going to piggyback all sorts of acknowledgements uh, on, on it. So what I'm going So what I'm going to do is all those timers that are running for packets that are outstanding, and that's for packet number one right through to the very last one that I want to acknowledge. I'm just going to stop those timers because I'm acknowledging them now. I don't have to be reminded to acknowledge it. Um, on the other hand, I'm going to send out a packet and I may have to retransmit it if I don't hear back from the other party. So this packet that I'm sending out, packet number S, um, I'm going to start a timer on that uh, so that when it expires, I uh, will be informed that uh, my, uh, will, will, uh, when it expires, I know, will know that I should have ex uh, received an acknowledgement, which I have not yet, and therefore I will know that I have to retransmit S. Um, however, uh, Typically, uh, in this process, uh, we will also have to increase S. So 
So given the logic that we've used uh, previously, I've just sent out packet S and I am um, increasing it. Uh, message will be sent more or less at that point. It will be packet S that I'm sending out and I will be acknowledging typically everything up to and include, well, up to A. The next event that we want to talk about is the event, well, number two here. I am receiving a packet. Uh, when I receive a packet, um, let's assume for the time being that packets arrive in order. That's not necessarily the case. So it means uh, I've received this package, so the next one that I should acknowledge um, is the sequence number of this one. And this will be the sequence number that the other party assigned to it. A um, couple of caveats here. If we are receiving packets out of order or if this happens to be a duplicate transmission, uh, or if there's a gap even, something that we have not received, we, we will have to uh, adapt this for that. Uh, I'm assuming here that uh, we, we haven't run into any of those complexities just to simplify uh, the discussion. I know that I've received this packet, so I should uh, acknowledge it. And... Hopefully there will be some opportunity for me to piggyback it on some message. But if there's no such opportunity, I have to acknowledge it. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a, a timer, an alarm clock or whatever um, for this packet. Um, start it so that it's ticking. ticking and if I don't acknowledge it, this will expire at some point and I will then send out the, the message. The incoming packet will also contain an acknowledgement number. In, in fact, it will be the acknowledgement number of the other side. In other words, A prime. And I have timers uh, waiting or ticking down uh, f uh, that uh, will force me to retransmit packets if they are not acknowledged. But here they are acknowledged. So I have to stop those timers. And remember we used RUA to indicate our retransmit timer. And I'm going to say all the packets f from one up to this one that's just been acknowledged all of those timers can be stopped because they have now been acknowledged. There's no reason to retransmit them anymore. Now, again, by saying one to a prime, I really mean everything up to a prime. Uh, some of the uh, timers with small numbers would have been uh, cancelled long ago. Event three is where I receive a negative acknowledgement. So there's a packet coming in and it's a knack. Uh, there's something wrong with the packet that you've sent. Um, now, uh, the, the knack will somehow tell us which packet uh, is, is faulty. Let's assume that it tells us that packet I is faulty, I being any packet that I've sent out. So um, what I will then have to do is uh, to retransmit the packet. So um, in order to deal with that situation, this is uh, condition number three, I'm going to retransmit that packet. Um, so this is packet I that I'm retransmitting. Um, I might as well acknowledge everything that I've received up to this point. So I'm using my own acknowledgement number. That's the next thing that I expect from the other side. And uh, then it's pretty much like sending out a packet. So I'm 
I've sent this packet out anew. Um, if uh, the timer was still running for me to retransmit it, uh, then I have to stop that timer. But since I'm sending out the packet uh, anew now, uh, I'm starting a new timer for it. So that if I don't hear back, uh, that it, if it's never acknowledged, then I can simply, uh, well, then it will time out, timer will expire, and I will transmit it again. Event number four is where a retransmit timer expires. So for some packet I that I've sent, uh, time runs out. It means I haven't heard anything back yet I should retransmit it. So, um, pretty simple. I'm going to retransmit it. And uh, a timer has just expired, so it's not going to cause any new problems. But for this packet that I'm sending out, uh, I have to start a new timer because the packet may again be lost and then I should be notified about the problem again. The final event to look at is when the acknowledgement timer expires. So for some packet I that I've received, I have not yet acknowledged it. There was no opportunity for me to piggyback it so uh, therefore I, uh, I need to acknowledge it now. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send out a packet now. Um, this is a bit of a problem. What number of, is the number of this packet? Is it a new packet? Uh, is it something um, that I should give a number or what? Now that depends pretty much on the protocol. So. What I'm going to say here is uh, I'm sending you a packet without number. Uh, that's a bit unrealistic, but it's good enough for our purposes. Um, but what I'm definitely going to do is I'm going to acknowledge this packet I that I received that I have not yet acknowledged. Um, I don't have to start any new timers uh, because uh, the packet is not numbered and the acknowledgement timer has expired, so there's no reason for me to stop it. In TCP, we use exactly the same uh, scheme with a tiny difference. In the end, it, it uh, becomes a, a rather big difference. Um, in TCP, we do not count the packets, so there's no packet 1, packet 2, packet 3. Um, we rather count the bytes. And part of the reason for this is that TCP was developed in the Unix world, and in the Unix world, one of the major innovations was the notion of streams, streams of data. So a file is a stream of bytes, a network connection is a stream of bytes, and all of those stream devices are treated in the same way. So when I send something via a TCP connection, I am sending a sequence of bytes. So, so if we again assume that station A or node A or host A is communicating to, with host A or B or process B, um, and this is a TCP connection that has been established, we will for starters have a sequence number and we will have an acknowledgement number and B will also have a sequence number and B will also have an acknowledgement number and uh, we can again use a trace table to uh, keep track of the values. So initially these values are set to zero. Suppose A sends data to B, then uh, 
the sequence number of this packet will be zero. The acknowledgement number of this package will be zero. But suppose that this packet consists of 15 bytes. Then the length associated with this packet will be 15. When this packet is sent, um, A will know that is it has just sent the 15 bytes numbered from 0 to 14. So the next byte that it will send out is byte number 15. Um, when this packet arrives at B, it will say, I've just uh, received 15 bytes numbered from 0 to 14, so the next one that I'm expecting is number 15. B has not transmitted anything yet. A has not seen anything from B yet. So the expectations uh, are uh, the 0 and the 15. So if A now sends a packet again to B, it will say the sequence number is equal to 15. It will still say the acknowledgement number is equal to 0. And the length is equal to... Now, suppose that this time we are sending 20 bytes. This means that A will up its uh, sequence number to 35. Uh, when the packet arrives on this side, uh, B will say that the next value that it expects it happens to be number 35. It's just received number 15, 16, 17, up to 34. So the next one would be 35. B still hasn't sent anything, so the next thing that it expects to send is zero. And similarly, A has not received anything from B yet. So what we are seeing here is a protocol that in essence works like a special case of the automatic repeat request protocol. The difference here is that the packets are not numbered, the bytes are. And the sequence numbers and the acknowledgement numbers refer to bytes. Apart from that, it is pretty much what we've discussed and the events that we've discuss discussed apply in the same way. One problem that we promised to address but that we've not addressed yet is the question whether the recipient is ready to receive a message. Now, whenever a TCP connection is established, a buffer is set aside and that buffer has a certain size. And whenever a TCP message is sent, uh, the remaining space in that buffer is transmitted along with the TCP message. And that is known as a window advertisement. So it tells the recipient on the other end, how big is the window in which I can receive data? In other words, um, how much how many bait uh, how many bytes uh, can I still accept? Here we have a trace table for TCP in which we've added uh, columns for knowledge about our own window space. In other words, how much space do we have to receive uh, messages from the other side? And also something that I called one prime, uh, which represents our knowledge of the available window space on the other side. Uh, initially, uh, the sequence number and the acknowledgement numbers will be set to zero again, just as was previously the case. Um, initially, when we established the connection, um, see it as part of the handshake, uh, I may have a buffer of 1,500 on my side. They may decide on their side that they want to allocate a buffer of 2,000. And then during the initial handshaking, 
I learned that they have 2,000 bytes available and they learned that I have 1,500 bytes available. So if A wants to talk to B, um, it will include quite a number of variables. A sequence number will be zero, the acknowledgement number will be zero, um, and the length will be whatever we're sending, let's say we're sending 100 bytes, and the window advertisement will be, well, in this case, 1,500. Now, when this message is sent, um, since we are sending 100 bytes, I know the next uh, value that I will be sending out is number 100, because I've sent out 0 to 99 now, 100 bytes. Um, the acknowledgement that I'm expecting is still 0. Uh, my window has not changed at all, because I've sent data out. But my expectation is that from the 2,000 bytes that were allocated initially, only 1,900 bytes will remain available. The 100 that I'm sending subtracted from the 2,000 that were allocated originally. So uh, on the receiving end, it will also uh, make similar changes, A would, or the sequence number would be zero. The acknowledgement uh, I've just received up to byte 99, so the next one is 100. Uh, my own window on this side has decreased by 100, and to the best of my knowledge, the window on the other side is still the same. Uh, we can continue sending messages back and forth. Uh, obviously, space on the screen is going to be an issue on a sheet of paper. It's much easier to explain. But the one way in which ch this changes things uh, dramatically, if the program at side B, whatever uh, application is sitting on top of uh, this protocol, consumes data from the buffer, uh, the buffer size will increase. So if the program on site, the one node B, consumes 50 bytes, then I will uh, have the 1,900 that used to be available plus the 50 bytes that have been consumed. So there's no communication. It's simply on node B that data have been consumed. The, according to our knowledge on site B, the buffer size at uh, A has not changed. Um, the acknowledgement number will remain 100 because no communication has occurred. It's only data consumption. The sequence number will remain unchanged. And on this side, uh, it will also be true that nothing changes, everything uh, note in, in particular, we at this point do not know that the buffer size increased or the window size increased at node B. It's whenever B sends us another uh, message, it will tell us that the window size is now 1950. And at that point, we will change our knowledge of the size uh, at the other end. In order to see this uh, fully operational, you really have to see it uh, in, on a real system. And in the next video, we will use Wireshark to illustrate this uh, in a real uh, context. So we've seen how data uh, uh, is numbered and acknowledged in TCP. Uh, and this enables us to know whenever data is lost. If the data is not uh, acknowledged, it's lost and we can retransmit it. However, the third problem that we mentioned, the problem of congestion. If things become so busy that nothing gets through, then just retransmitting and retransmitting 
will worsen the problem. And to solve that problem, you'll have to wait until video three. In video three, we will also talk about UDP, which, as we sort of indicated, contains nothing that helps us with reliability. So UDP will entail a very short discussion. Thank you.